And good evening, everybody. It is Thursday, February the 17th, 2022. Welcome to our weekly devotional discussion together tonight. Glad everybody's here. Hope everybody is safe and doing well with the storms that have been rolling through. And uh, just glad to see everybody that has joined us, though. But good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening, Joey, Judy. Thank you. We got three or four rivers running through the front yard, but other than that, we're okay. Tell me about it, brother. It's it's coming a uh, a toad strangler, as they say down here right now. Yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna make you the co-host just in case my power goes out because it has been flickering uh -oh. for the, la for the okay. last hour. So if I go off, this meeting goes off unless there's a co-host. All right, we can do that. <laughs> and if this had been an hour ago, you would have found me in a closet. Yeah, yeah. Because that, um, unfortunately, that circulation that went right over around Leeds that has been, it looks like confirmed damage, uh, actually went just a little, I've been talking within a few miles south of our house. So wow. It was crazy, crazy, crazy. Yeah, I talked to Tammy a while ago and they took off and went to Oak Bowery just to be safe, but it, it fell apart before it got to their area. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's some more bad news going on, and um, there's a massive fire in Pigeon Forge right now. Oh, around Parkside uh, Resort, and they've evacuated a two-mile area around the resort. So it's. Mm -hmm. Have you, Joe? You can't put that up, can you? What? That video. Mary Jean's going to tag you on it. Okay. I, I'm going to. Uh, I'm looking for the tag. I just did. I did it. Mary Jean did too. Oh, there it is. Ding. Ding. I heard that. Let's see. I'm going to mute myself here in case it, I'm assuming it has volume with it. So I'm going to mute myself just for a second. I'd like putting Joey on the spot. <laughs> he can he can handle it. I was just I was just noticing my beautiful hairdo here. I, it looks like I should have brushed my hair before I got on camera. <laughs> well, we're not going to dock you pay for it. We. Uh, We've been sitting here, of course, I think now, I guess Mary Jean turned the TV off. We, we've had the radar on for the last hour and a half watching that storm. So, Joe, you back? Yeah, I'm getting it ready here. Okay. The, uh, you know, Mareda and Natalie joined us two weeks ago, and uh, they were all set to join us. Uh, however, they have been in huddled in their closet for – um uh, about the last 45 minutes wow <laughs> so it, it's a it's a, it's a, it's a school. Are, but... there it is there it is Judy, if you're in pigeon forge looking up into the mountains there's just a whole bunch of cabins with fires all around them oh my gosh where Mary Jean posted that. That's terrible. Yeah. Maybe this Ryan's headed that way. That would be good. It is. That's good. I mean, I'm, uh -huh. it's probably too late for some, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, That's crazy. Uh, we, uh, but uh, like I said, Marina and Natalie, they were all excited and geared up to join us tonight. Uh, but uh, it being a school night for Natalie, and uh, they're they're an hour and a half behind their routine, so they haven't even fixed supper yet. So, oh. so they're probably not going to join us, but they'll watch later. And uh, they uh, they watched our. I think uh, I think Natalie uh, Marita, uh watched our church service about the time I got home, or right before I got home, or something on Sunday. So, uh, so that was nice. Yeah. But, uh, 
It's coming, Pigeon Four, just coming. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. But yeah, uh, I, yeah. I, I hope everybody stays safe. And, you know, I mean, we're not, uh, there may not be a tornado warning, but that doesn't mean we're all out of the woods yet. Yeah, Jerry's worried about all his grass seed out there he planted. He put straw yeah. hay on top of it. But... It's, yeah, it, it, it's going to end up in the backwaters of the Coosa about, yeah. about daylight. Probably. Probably. This, this, this line moving through right now, everybody that's getting affected by it, it'll once it passes, we're done with it. That's it. Yeah. Hey, look, look, at, look at who the cat drug hey, is. Hey, stranger. Hey there. She's all good in North Alabama. She's like, what you talk, what you talking about? Rain. <laughs> oh no, I actually restarted my computer because it was doing weird things. So I restarted it. I was like, all right, I'm ready to join. Restart. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome. Uh, we were just, uh, <clears throat> uh, Anthony and I was just telling them that Mareda and Natalie were uh, all set, ready to join us. And then the tornado uh, went within just a few blocks of their house. Are they okay? Uh, they are fine. Thank uh, God. Uh, didn't even lose power, as a matter of fact. But it was, it was really close. We could see their street uh, and the debris cloud was just very, very close to them. That's wow. scary. That's scary. Mercy. To see that. It was, and uh, so anyways, we're all okay, and I just want to say greetings from Asheville, Alabama, from Mary and her mother, Mary, and me, and uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, and, Happy and, and, birthday, Mother Mary. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Happy birthday, Mother Mary. Happy birthday, Mother Mary. Happy birthday, Mary. Yeah, she, she got three three bucks, uh, three books, and a free pizza for supper tonight. <laughs> hold on, hold on, everybody, hold on, just a second. Been a while since you've heard this. I know. Hold on. Here we go, everybody. Now. <laughs> Sing it to you backwards. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> Judy, I know I, I know you couldn't see that, but Jerry turned his chair around. She, she's been milking this for all it's worth. This is about her third or fourth birthday dinner. Here. Hey, that sounds familiar. There yeah. you go. Like somebody else I know coming oh, over. Who does that? Go. Who else in that house, in the, in the Ashley's oh. house, does that? You know, Mary Jean's bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that makes it unanimous then, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brett's, Brett's bad about it too. <laughs> <laughs> what about the cat? <laughs> well i'll tell you what we got we got cat issues <clears throat> we uh th this is this is a magnet for stray cats uh, uh, we got we, we got two two new ones come up out here oh my god uh, no. but, you know, when you live on a cul-de-sac you know people drive to the end of it and dump them out at night gosh mm -mm -mm. So He'd stop and, leaving tuna on the curb. Maybe the kitties would stop coming. <laughs> Don't tell me that. Okay, <laughs> sorry. All righty. Well, I uh, hope everyone has had a good week in uh, so far, and uh, we uh, hope we all make it through. And those that have suffered any damage get through it all right tonight. And haven't heard of any injuries yet. So uh, hopefully everybody's okay. Several trucks got blown over by high winds on the interstate, and I think a few minor injuries there. Nothing, nothing bad. This is this is the interstate system in Birmingham right now. You see all that orange? 
Wow. And I've got to go pick up Jana at any moment. So that's going to be good luck. Oh, <laughs> I hope you know the back roads. Yeah, I do. <laughs> good deal, Lucy. All right. Well, uh, tell you what, we're going to go ahead and, and get going here. Yes. So uh, let me let me just start us off with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the good things in life. And we thank you for keeping us safe so far with this bad weather. And Lord, we just ask you to be with any of those who have had damage and uh, are dealing with uh, issues because of the weather. Lord, we just uh, want to ask you to bless our time here tonight. Thank you for each person that's decided to join us here live and for those that will join us later on Facebook. Uh, we love you and we love them. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start with Friday. Jerry's going to do Saturday <laughs> and, uh, and Jerry gets Tuesday also, I believe. So, all right. So I guess that leaves right. me well, no, and Sunday me, and if, Wednesday. If, if you wanted Friday, you can have that. But, uh, so let me just start over. Jerry's got Saturday and Tuesday. So that leaves five days. All right, I will take uh, Sunday is perfect peace. And uh -huh. uh, Wednesday. All right. I have not looked at these yet. I'm just going to tell you. That's all right. I apologize. Yeah. And Wednesday. Okay. All right. If you don't want to do Thursday, I'll, I'll take it. Well, I usually don't do two in a row, but. Well, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens when you get there. Amen. All right, Joe, you want to start us up? Well, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to do Friday. I I, uh, I, I I like that one. Yeah, any of the open ones, uh, if I'm yeah. still here, I'll, I'll be happy to do it. I got you. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see. Maybe, uh, I, I, you know, I hope, I hope Jana gets home earlier the better. Yes. But uh, maybe if she stays a little while, the rains may dissipate. Yeah, it's running through real quick, so it should be dissipated. All right. Here is, here is one of my favorite scriptures in all the Bible. Um, Isaiah 6, 1 through 8, and our verse is verse 8. This is for last Fridays. I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here I am, sin, here am I, send me. A husband and I had served as youth helpers for two years when our pastor approached us about the need for a youth pastor at a small church across the state. My initial response was, no way. I had no formal education or training. And I had left that area as a tumultuous, after a tumultuous childhood. I had no desire to return to a place where I had felt judged and isolated in my heart, desired to live for Jesus, and I felt him calling. So we answered the call, of course, when we said, send us. Our was more like a frightened mumble than a shout, mm -hmm. but we said yes. Though it proved challenging, I'll never regret our response. <clears throat> God moved in mighty ways through us. We were able to launch a youth group and brought teams from different denominations together for camps, offering them a sense of belonging. Through outreach efforts, we also saw significant transformation in the lives of many imprisoned youth. I'm still amazed at the powerful ways God used us and, our, and all our imperfections. At that time in my life, I learned that God doesn't need the smartest or most talented people to transform the world. God simply needs someone willing to say, send me. And that is from Katie J. Trent from the sunny state of Arizona. And the prayer focus is on missionaries. And the thought for the day when I say yes, God can do great things through me. <clears throat> Amen. Antoinette, you may or may not know the 
story, but 30 years ago, I was in Montgomery and uh, my pastor came to me and asked me to be the youth leader at the church. And I thought he was out of his mind. <laughs> I, you know, I really thought he was coming to the house to try to talk me out of going to Biloxi and going to the casinos to visit my friend. <laughs> but he just, <laughs> anyways, long story short, uh, I took over a youth group that had five people in it. Uh, <clears throat> All of the kids there knew more about the Bible than I did. And by the time I left Montgomery, uh, we were having sometimes 40 kids on Friday nights wow. at, the, at the church. Amen. And boy, I tell you what, fighting the church over that Friday night, dude, there's going to be drinking. There's going to be smoke. There's going to be corrals. There's going to be gangs. There's going to be fights. It's just going to be one big, you know, free for all. And, and I want to tell you that every, not one time on a Friday night that we have one single issue. Not Amen. one. Amen. Oh, right. I mean, it was just an unbelievable blessing. And, uh, so that, that was really kind of my first dip, dipping my toes in the, in the ministry waters. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I just, uh, I've just been amazed at uh, what God has, has done in my life and, uh, the way he's blessed us. And, uh, you know, over the last eight and a half years, being at Fort Bend is just, been certainly a highlight of, of my ministry. Uh, and, you know, you, you don't have to be at the biggest church in the world. Uh, uh, you know, I, I know I, a lot of good friends of mine are preachers at those big churches. And uh, I tell you, I, I, I doubt that they have more blessings than I do. And uh, I'm very thankful for that. But, uh, you know, I, I just... I wanted to take this one tonight because I, I wanted to challenge each one of you. And when I get back in the pulpit, I may do the same thing uh, to just really seriously consider uh, uh, this scripture and, and how it applies to all of our lives. That doesn't mean you got to get up in the pulpit and say anything, but there's lots of different ways that God needs us and can use us we just have to be the willing vessels i mean not everybody can join a new church and be appointed lay leader within about two weeks <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't know that judy that's antoinette i'm talking about <laughs> Yeah, she, she she just moved right in there and just took over the whole church. It wasn't two weeks. <laughs> oh, it was two days. Is that right? Mercy. Not not, on, not only did she run the lay leader out of town, she uh, uh, she took over his spot. <laughs> there's a new there's a new sheriff in town. Ooh, mercy. <laughs> And I just heard it thunder. Wow. I know I know for a fact from stories I've heard that there are pastors out there who love anybody that come in and volunteer for positions or get assigned to positions and they say yes. yes. I'll gladly do it. Yes. <laughs> That's right. I guarantee you. <laughs> And I wonder if Michael knows that you're a, you're a member of Horton Ben also. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. so. You have, oh, dual, you have dual citizenship. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Woo. But but the yeah, Methodist Church is a is an interconnectional church. So I'm absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Hence the word united. Yes. But you know, seriously, folks. Uh, it. Uh, 
Uh, it, it is something that, that uh, you know, you know, there is such a thing as getting burnt out on church too. So you, you, you got to find a balance, but I just would encourage everybody to find your place in some ways that God can help, uh, help the world by using you. So anyways, let's bow our heads. Dear God, help each of us to be willing to say yes to you. Give us the strength to serve you in whatever ways we can. Amen. Amen. And I, All right, Jerry. Can I add one comment come, to, that, come to on. that previous one? And, and it's not a silly comment either. Um, you know, all those years that I was, that I led the music there at church and did other things, you know, those are the biggest blessings of my life. But, you know, as, as sad and, you know, everything I was back in December of 17 when I left and, you know, we, we started going to church down here closer to us and everything, as sad as that was to not be at my home church anymore. Um, it was a huge blessing also for me just to sit at a church and just sit there and, and, and just take it in and not have any position or not have this to do or that to do, you know, and I'm not, and I'm not downing, but doing things at church, you know, like, you know, leading worship or whatever, cause those are awesome things to do. But it, I think it's, like you said, it's important just to, you know, take some rest and relaxation, but find your spot, you know, don't just sit out the whole thing, you know, take a look, take a break here and there, but just get back into it. You know, I think that's, that's important. Yep, yeah, that's true. So. Amen. Anyway, that's all I had. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. I think well, it was. With, with you taking over the youth. Uh, Jerry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Charles and Shirley, when they took over uh, Big Oak Ranch, Charles had to set his suitcase down the day they walked in to break up a fight oh. and he said after that it kind of got a little bit rowdy but it calmed down quickly well they didn't take over the ranch it was when they started being well, house parents house there. parents yeah when they took over that house yeah over, as house parents they had to set his suitcase down to break up a fight wow but it didn't last long thank goodness but anyway i guess we all have it okay Saturday, February 12, new shoots comes from John 11, 38 through 44, and the verse is 25 and 26. Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Absolutely. Amen. Beautiful queen of the night flowers grew in our yard. My family loved to stay up late and enjoy their pleasant fragrance. However, during last year's dry season, a fire destroyed every plant around our house. We did not expect to be able to enjoy those flowers again, but as the rains started falling this year, new and beautiful shoots of this wonderful plant surprisingly sprouted in the yard. The shoots had died in the fire, but the roots remained safe in the ground until the rains brought them new life. This made me think about how God, through Christ, renews us. When we are overcome by troubles or despair, we can trust God and patiently wait like the roots of our queen of the night flower. When we miss opportunities for growth, experience delays, or our prayers are not answered as we expect, we always have the hope of new life when we remain rooted in Christ. And that comes from Olaya Miyua Benaralf, from the Federal Capital Territory in Nigeria, and the prayer focus, those who are struggling to cope, and the thought for the day is, I trust that God can always bring new life. And I think of this situation every spring when everything starts budding out, the trees start to leaf out. It's just like a new life beginning 
in the, in the spring. And it kind of reminds us of being born again and knowing that once you are born again, it's a new life, one that will never die. Amen. I've heard the quote uh, that spring is God's <laughs> gift to a cold, dead world. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. Amen, Amen. to that. I bought Mary Jean a couple of fig trees for Valentine's. And uh, I noticed when I came home today that the trees have started to bud. Wow. Put on, put on new wow. growth. And uh, it, uh, looking forward to uh, the figs that they'll produce hopefully one day. And, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting, you know, about the seasons. It's, you know, it's been dark and cold and rainy and uh, the grass is, is brown and the, and the trees lost their leaves. And, uh, of course, the last couple of weeks, we've seen the, the daffodils, the jonquils, or whatever you want to call them, the yellow flowers, uh, popping up everywhere. And, and the, the spring and the new life is coming. And I'm thankful for that. Absolutely. We Amen. had a we had a jonquil bloom in the backyard just this week. Jonquils, daffodils, buttercups, I think they're all the same flower. Some are just a little bit larger than others. But they are pretty. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Okay, let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to trust in you even when we don't see your presence. Grant us patience, for we know you can bring new life out of every situation. As Jesus taught us, we pray, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. 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 Okay, I guess this is Antoinette's day. All righty. Joey, you sure you don't want one before you run away? <laughs> I mean, you, you wanted this one, so you Yes, can. absolutely. Perfect peace. Uh, read Psalms 23, 1 through 6. And then the scripture for tonight is Isaiah 26, 3 from King James. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Roughly two years ago, my doctor discovered that I had breast cancer, and I spent the following year fighting the disease. During that time, I suffered. I asked everyone to pray. Then, sorry, I kept, bleh. I asked everyone to pray, then kept them to myself, turning inward. I wrestled with the unknown and felt sick from the chemotherapy. My husband supported me completely fielding calls from loved ones and friends when I was feeling too tired or sad. For months, I've now been enjoying relatively good health. That changed several weeks ago when I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer. I wanted it to be different this time, but metastatic cancer is not something that can be cured. Even if I enter remission, the cancer will eventually return. I'm only 66, and I really thought I had this beat. My days and my nights alternate between relatively calm and complete anguish. How can I tell my loved ones? What will my husband do without me? What will I do about my beloved cats and dog? Trusting in the Holy Spirit, I know one thing. God has been and will be with me every step of the way. I know, and I'll say that again, and I know 
I be, will be with my creator in eternal life. When my worries become overwhelming, God is there to share my burdens. And this was from Belinda Voigtman from Missouri. And it says she passed away before the, the publication was published. Um, the prayer focus is those living with a terminal illness. And the thought for the day is when troubles overwhelm me, God will ease my burdens. And um, one of the reasons that I picked that, you know, a lot of us, we are so excited about heaven. We are super excited. Oh, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. And then we just, we don't want to do what it takes to get there. And unless the Lord comes back, we're going to have to die to get there, to die physically. But the Bible promises us a couple of things. One, he promised us eternal life. So I, 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 I learned in a, in a strange point in my life with my nephew, who is almost 18 now, which is hard to believe. But my mom passed away May 12th, and my nephew was born two weeks later. And so um, the next, I think I told you about my maze, the first Wednesday in May, a tree fell on the house. The next Wednesday in May, my mom went to be with the Lord. The next Wednesday in May, my little cousin was born. And the following Wednesday, the final uh, Wednesday in May of 2004, my nephew was born. Yeah. And it just seemed like, you know, the sun wasn't going to shine again and so many different things when my mom passed away. But I realized that the Lord promised that he's never going to leave us nor forsake us, you know, not in death, not in life, nothing. But I started saying, because we were so excited about the baby coming, I said, heaven is pregnant waiting for mom. And when you kind of have that perspective, when, you know, when somebody's about to have a baby or you find out somebody's pregnant, you're just all excited. And there's so many different things that you get excited about. And I realized that heaven was pregnant waiting for my mother. And so to have that perfect peace and knowing, yeah, there's bad days and there's really awful days, but then the peace that God gives passes all understanding. So that's actually why I wanted to read that one. Amen. Any comments that I scare everybody away? <laughs> No, you know, I think that that's that's just a uh, that's a difficult subject to to talk about. Um, it's uh, well, I tell you, I have uh, I've sat down with some folks, friends of mine, that were in that position, and uh, you know, when when they look at you and they say, Pastor why I, well you, you start searching for words real quick and, and, and it's just it's, it's hard to explain it's just it, it just a lot of times all you can do is just hold your hand and tell them you love them. and uh, <clears throat> but uh, unfortunately uh, it may not be from a terminal disease but like Antoinette said, uh, more than likely we're all going to have to go through that one day. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, I, I, I used to fear that day and it would just paralyze me in terror. The day that I closed my eyes and I stopped breathing and my heart stopped beating. Uh, but you know now, uh, because of the confidence that I have in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it 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 doesn't bother me, it doesn't scare me. Um, I, uh, I I'm going to just cherish every day that I have and uh, uh, try to make the best of it. Uh, not worry about what tomorrow holds and uh, if today's my last day I know that God's going to take care of all the people that I love Amen. Amen I know when we first moved into this house we've been here probably about six months 
everybody kept asking me at times, said, well, where's your next move going to be? And I said, I'm not taking any furniture, I'm not <laughs> taking any clothes, because the next move I make is going to be up. <laughs> and I'm not going to worry about anything else. But I, I do remember the day that daddy died and I can see his brother right now, just as plain as day performing CPR. Of course, it, it didn't work. It wasn't his time to come back to life. So we just, all right, we'll see you shortly. We'll see you soon. What a great reunion it will be. Amen. That's right. Listen to that song this morning. What a glad reunion day that'll be. There you go. On my way to work. <laughs> yep. Amen. All right. Well, let us pray. Merciful God, we surrender our lives to you. May we live for your glory. And then when it's time to die, may we die in faith. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Joy, you want to take Monday? And, Absolutely. And then, uh, then I'll take Wednesday unless... Unless uh, Antoinette wrestles it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or Thursday, uh, I'll do Thursday. Monday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Hugs and kisses to everybody. Hugs and kisses. <laughs> <laughs> the title on this one, Loving God. First John 4.19 says, We love because God first loved us. And it says, one February morning, I walked into my church's daycare center and found the room filled with valentines. Red hearts, pink hearts, hearts adorned with paper dollies, hearts cut from magazines. They hung from the ceiling. They were posted on bulletin boards and taped to windows. They were scattered on tables. I commented to the director about the delightful display. Oh, she explained, these are valentines that the children made for God. What a wonderful idea. Every February, my wife and I send Valentine's Day cards to our grandchildren to let them know that we love them. But too often, I fail to express my love to God. My love for God is a response to God's divine love for me. We can express our love to God by spending time in God's presence, enjoying God's nearness, reading God's word, and daily seeking to know God better. We also show our daily love for God in the way we talk, what we do, and how we use our talents. Every day is made up of hundreds of little moments that are opportunities to love God, and every opportunity matters. I try to include in my morning prayers some verbal valentine, and in my daily activities, demonstrations to God that are a simple, I love you, to the one, with a capital O, to the one, who first loved me. Wow, that was a good one. Oh. That, is, that is from Drexel C. Rankin from Kentucky on the back cover. On the middle, in, uh, in the middle row, in the middle. And the prayer focus for this day, someone who needs my love and the thought for this day, I will be intentional about showing my love for God today. You guys have heard me say numerous times that how important it is, especially these days, about uh, showing our love to others. Those we don't agree with, those that don't look like us, that do, those that don't come from our same backgrounds that we came from. That's what Jesus would do, and that's what I want to do. That's what I'm called to do as a follower of him. And it's hard. I mean, I'm sitting here telling you, it is hard to do. And especially today when it seems like we can't have a civil conversation without getting into an uproar, but it's just something I try to work on for myself. And I love that the story that uh, Drexel put in here about showing our love to God more. I mean, I think hopefully we, we, we wake up every day and we just thank him for the day that he's blessed us with for giving us another day another day with breath in our body to go out and be a blessing to him, represent him and, and to be a blessing to others. Um, and so I think that's a wonderful idea just to not just Valentine's day, but every day, just show our love and our appreciation to him 
um, just like we would an actual physical person, like, you know, our spouse, our best friend, whoever it may be for uh, their love and companionship or their friendship. So I uh, definitely love this one for sure. Love this one. Any thoughts from anyone? I think that's what a lot of people find it hard to do, Joey, is showing love and appreciation for somebody that you don't really like. Yeah. You know, because a different background, a different ethnicity, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Well, Joey, I'm going to tell you. I I, 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 I hate to even say anything after what you just said. I thought you said what you said was great. Very good. That's a good sermon. It was. That's my Sunday sermon right there. Goodbye. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic and walk off. <laughs> this is the closest thing I have to a mic. It's a flashlight, but I'm not going to noise, but... Flashlight might come in handy tonight. Mm -hmm. It's bright enough. Did you have anything else, Joe? Was that no, it? no. I, I told okay. you. I, I, <laughs> what you said was great. Well, and I love hearing stories about uh, people that didn't have the same, you know, ideas about life. You know, they got different thoughts, and they just sit there and they and they talk, and they find out they have more in common than they thought they did. I mean. You know, that's what makes our world go round. And goodness, we need to get back to that. Amen. I'll get off my 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 preacher box here. <laughs> All right, I'm going I'm going to read something to you uh, on Facebook. Okay. This is from uh, a boy. Well, he's not a boy now. He's a man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's not forty, but he's a man. Uh, Rhett Lister. Uh, All right. He is a uh, pastor now at Halton. And wow. he, he was in our youth group at Halton when Mary Jean and I were there. Uh, he, he posted this. Uh, this is from the Cur Clergy Coaching Network. And this is from Dr. Michael J. Spiegel. Uh, Theology 101, like this is a college class for the basic the question should never be is this action leftist or right wing liberal or conservative socialist or capitalist the question should be does this action love my neighbor look out for their interests more than my own manifest the through the fruit of the spirit How about that? Wow. Amen. I saw that posted by Mary Jean today. Yeah. Mary, Mary Jean read that to me yesterday and I, and I saw it here. Yeah. I thought that, thought that was really good. And, and I think that that's so true going on right along with what Joey said. I mean, we, we, we fight about things and, uh, you know, all the politics and, and, it's, and it's both sides. It's both sides in the middle. Yeah, that's uh, right. Everybody's guilty of it. Uh, I, Antoinette, I, I say this often. <clears throat> you know, you have one side calling the other side liars. So, what does the other side do? Well, they call the other side liars. <laughs> and, and you know what? Somebody's lying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and and probably more than likely, they're both not telling both. the whole truth. Yeah. Right. And, and I'm not getting down on politicians or public servants or anything like that, but, but, you know, it's just, it, it, they spend way too much time arguing and fighting and trying to preserve their power rather than serving people. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, the, the, the church is not immune to that either. No, there is there is a lot of politics. There's a lot of wheeling and dealing that goes on in the church, not in Horton Bend, but you know, in the church in general. And uh, so, uh, 
I'm just so thankful that, uh, you know, my next appointment uh, has nothing to do with my income, has nothing to do with my status, has nothing to do with my desire to climb the, the, the church hierarchy ladder. And, uh, you know, my next appointment probably be in heaven. Yeah, amen. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm very, been very thankful for that. And, uh, uh, but, you know, it, it's out there. And, and I just, I just wish that we would all just do what the devotion said, is just try to love God. If you love God, then you're going to love each other. Amen. Amen. That's all I'll say about that. All right. Amen, brother. Any other thoughts from anybody on this one? Let us pray. Loving God, we want to know you and be known by you. May your love radiate from us so that others will know your love. Amen. 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 Sherry said something. We lost her. That was a spam call. Oh. That's what she asked me. Pick it up and say, I love you. I was, <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was cutting down a tree the other day with a chainsaw, and we got a spam call, and I almost answered it. <laughs> it up in his ear, but I didn't. Y'all cutting all these trees down, and you don't have any trees left. No, we got plenty. Oh, <laughs> we got plenty. <laughs> these were itty bitties. Yeah. These were itty bitties. Okay. <laughs> Your Tuesday. Tuesday, February 15. A gentle heart comes from Philippians 4 5, which says, Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. I'm a driven person. I thrive on achieving new things and checking items off my daily to do list. I was competitive early in my childhood, even over simple games like musical chairs. As I grew older, I began to believe the message that we must always bring our best to everything we do, and even that we must always be the best. In many ways, I have been rewarded for my drive throughout my life, but what few people know is how hard I am on myself. I can be my own worst critic, examining everything I say and do for flaws. I scrutinize my performance at work, at home, in ministry, and in my relationships. And I expect more from myself than anyone else ever does. Lately, God has been showing me another way. Jesus had a difficult mission to accomplish, but his approach made all the difference. Jesus had a calm and gentle spirit, and from this wellspring of divine love flowed acts of kindness, healing, and restoration. I think God wants us to pursue worthy goals and plans, but first, God wants to show us that how we go about pursuing them is just as important. Mm -hmm. And that comes from Payumi, Kapagikiyana from Western <laughs> Province, Sri Lanka. And I don't know what it is about Sri Lanka, but I love saying that name. It's like Missoula, Sri Montana. Lanka. I think you mispronounced that name, though. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how it is. Correct me then. <laughs> Correct me. <laughs> Missoula, Montana. <laughs> Jim. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Tom Smith. <laughs> but anyway, the prayer focus, people who are hard on themselves, and the thought for the day, when I am weighed down by self-criticism, I will remember to be gentle like Jesus. Amen. And I think a lot of times people are more critical of others than they are themselves when they need to be held accountable for their actions just as readily as others are. Amen. 
Amen. Any comments? I'll just I'll just say that the 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 title of this uh, devotion uh, reminds me of my dad. Uh, none of us, none of us knew him. Judy may have met him. Did you ever meet my dad, Judy? I did. Now yeah. I don't remember a lot about him, but I remember meeting him. Yes. But he was uh, a gentle soul, uh, quiet, a uh, little bitty fellow, about, about Clarence's size, with about 30, if you put 30 pounds on Clarence, he'd, that'd, be, that'd be my dad. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, you didn't ever want to cross him, that's for sure. <laughs> but 99% of the time, he was just as gentle and calm and reasonable and easygoing and patient. And uh, I, I always like to say that my dad had uh, had the patience and the in the spirit of Jesus in him. He re he really did. He was a fine man and a really gentle heart. When right before dad died, I say right before, it was several weeks before, he called me and said, are you busy? And I said, no. Can you come over here? And I said, sure, what you need? And he said, just come on over here for a little bit. I want to talk to you. Okay, I'll be there in about 30 minutes. So I went over there. I lived in Glencoe. He was in downtown Gadsden. And he told me, he said, we talked just general chat, chat and he told me he said i want to apologize to you i said whoa you stop right there you don't apologize to me for anything that you've said done or anything else because if there are any apologies it's the reverse me apologizing to you for giving you such a hard time growing up and he kind of chuckled and he said well since you put it that way, I won't say what I was going to say. And I said, Dad, I love you. And I always have. Um, I was trying to think what he said after that. But for the life of me, I just, I guess it just kind of caught me aback. And I just, I don't remember what he said after that. But he said, that's all I needed. And I appreciate what you said. And I said, well, you just keep in mind. And it was probably five or six weeks after that, when he got really bad and um, finally passed. And I said, well, we're celebrating his life now. Amen. Amen. All right, Jay, you want to pray? I uh, was just getting everybody a chance. Joey looks like he's fixing to have to leave us. Yep. Okay. Let us pray. Dear God, as we pursue goals in life, teach us to be gentle with ourselves and others. Amen. Amen. Be safe, Joey. Yep. Be safe, Joey. I will, guys. I'll, be, I'll still be listening in here. All right. All right, Anthony, you do Wait. Wednesday and I'll do Thursday. I'll, I'll do Wednesday. Um, I did have one little comment about the gentle heart when Jerry was talking about his dad. My, my father passed away when I was two and my mom passed away almost 18 years ago. But one day during the time frame of somewhere between 2000 and 2003, while I was you know, taking care of her in the whole nine yards after, after open heart surgery, my mom said to me, you know, your father would be proud. Your dad would be really proud. My dad got sick when I was a baby. So, I mean, he, he didn't get to see me do a whole lot. But um, my mom said to me, your father would be proud. And I just, like, those words, they still carry me. You know, it's, it's kind of cool. So there's sometimes when you, when you have a person in your life that has a gentle heart, they have that gentle spirit. They can say one thing and, you know, like you never forget it. 
or you never forget how it made you feel. Like Jerry can't remember what his dad said, but I know you could tell he was starting to get tear up a little bit that that just he could feel that love coming from his dad. So thank you for sharing that. And I just wanted to tell you all that. Sure, absolutely. All right. So yesterday's theme was loneliness. Read Matthew 22, 34 through 40. And then in verse 29, 39, it says, Jesus said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And Mary Jean, I have a song that goes with that, but I'll do it at the end. So social media has captivated our world. The internet and wireless communications have created unprecedented global interactions. But in spite of this connection, our society is experiencing a surge of loneliness. In response to this loneliness, there are now programs in large metropolitan areas to encourage socializing. The UK even has a minister for loneliness, which is crazy, to combat social isolation and reduce associated health risks. There are new public strategies to battle loneliness. But what is my personal strategy as a Christian? The obvious one is to love my neighbor as myself. Jesus told us the greatest commandments are to love God and love others. But this law of love often illuminates my shortcomings. In stories, in stores, sorry, I can't read tonight. In stores, doctor's offices, my neighborhood or other public places, I can easily become self-absorbed and oblivious to those around me, sometimes while on my cell phone. Instead of connecting with those who physically cross my path, I become captivated by virtual connections. I now pray for help to be present in the moment and attentively greet the people around me. Our individual efforts to live Jesus' commandments and ease loneliness in our world can feel insignificant. But when Christians truly seek to love God and love others, we can make a real difference. And that was from Beverly Taylor from Arizona. And um, I think about Joe's letter, and I, I haven't done it yet, the letter to the neighbors, um, but just how to actually be where you are at that time and, and still be pleasing to God. And, and showing love to other people. Um, when I got my COVID infusion, it was kind of funny. The, the lady who was there with me, she had her phone and she, she had a book and, you know, she, um, we ended up talking almost the entire time we were there. It was really kind of funny. And uh, she said to me, you know, she usually, if she's traveling, if she gets on an airplane, she immediately puts in her, her earbuds and everything and, and listens to music or listens to something to kind of drown out the possibility of having a conversation. And the two of us, we, we couldn't have looked any more different. We talked the entire time and we ended that time with prayer. And it was just kind of wild. And, and she even said to me, she goes, I'm, I'm not the kind of person that usually talks. And Hal teases me that I have a talk to me sign that's over my head. <laughs> people, and, and it has happened to me like my entire life. Um, people even come in the building at school. I have early morning duty every other week. And I mean, electricians have come in and, and talked to me. One day it was really bizarre. I was standing like here and the principal and one of the vice principals was you know, not very far away. And the contractors came in from the district, which was kind of wild to me. And they're like, well, we're working on the heating unit and we should have it going pretty soon. And I'm like, thank you. I will walk you to our administrators and you can let them know. People just talk to me. And so um, I guess it's my boring personality, but I, I, I thank God for it. And um, I, I just pray that knowing that that is a gift that God has given me, that I, that I try to use it in a way that shows his love and shares his love with others. And glorifies him. Absolutely. Amen to that. You know, we were, uh, <clears throat> 
several times tonight, people have mentioned uh, about somebody not looking like somebody else. And uh, Mary Jean and I were talking last night. Uh, there was a politician on TV who was claiming that he was being attacked because of the color of his skin. And, uh, and, and Mary Jean, uh, believe it or not, she's usually pretty quick to give her opinion on things. And, uh, and of course, you know, she just mentioned about, uh, you know, how she just really doesn't see color. Uh, there, there's a fella who, who does, has a landscaping business, takes care of our yard. And, uh, and he, he's just one of the finest fellas that we know. Uh, and he just happens to be African-American, but I'm going to tell you what, uh, th there's not many nicer people in Asheville, Alabama than Maurice. I want to tell you. And, uh, and I've told Maurice, I said, as soon as COVID slows down, we're going to have him and his wife over for dinner. And, and then, you know, I, I just chimed in and I, I, I said, you know, I said, when I see Antoinette, I don't see color. I, I, I just see uh, a glow uh, about you. And uh, I mean, your hair's a little longer than mine, but <laughs> other, other <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I mean, it, it's, uh, you know, I, I really wish that, that we mm -hmm. get, get, get past uh, all of the, uh, all the issues that are going on just because of the color of somebody's skin yeah. or, or the neighborhood that they're from or from the country that they're from or whatever. And uh, I just, uh, you, you know, Antoine, I've told a lot of people this story. You know, I grew up in Bristol, New Jersey, about 45 minutes or an hour away from where you grew up. Right. And I want to tell you, the town that I grew up in, uh, nobody would believe it, but the town that I grew up in was a whole lot more racially segregated and there was more racism in that town than, than I have ever noticed in Alabama and people just wouldn't believe that yeah. and uh but it was true I mean it was it was pretty bad and uh but I uh I I just think that uh that we just need to get back to loving God loving each other and and I'm just I'm just so thankful that uh that you have uh adopted us and uh and, and allowed us to be a part of your life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Well, is, that okay, like, honey? is that okay, honey? <laughs> okay. All right. I've got to tell you something comical. When I taught in Marshall County, I was the only African American teacher in the district for two years. And I don't know if I told you guys this, but my kids wanted to, they'd want to touch my hair. At the time, my hair was only about this long. And they'd say, can we touch your hair? And I'd say, sure. And I'd lean over and when they got ready to touch it, they'd go, <laughs> growl. <at it. laughs> but um, people ask me, well, how, how does it feel to be the only African-American somewhere? And this was my honest answer. I said, it, it's no big deal. It even happens when I go home. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I'm in an interracial marriage, and uh, oh my word, it was it was funny, and people would, I mean, they just it, whew, it went totally over their head. It was That's priceless. <laughs> so, okay, as promised, I have a song for you, and I have not honestly heard this song since. The last time I did a missions trip to Nova Scotia, but it just, it, it goes with the scripture. And the song goes like this. Smile, God loves you. Put your hands in the hands of the Lord. Clap, clap, clap. Smile, God loves you. Put your trust in his holy word. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Treat everybody right. 
Smile, God loves you. And heaven knows he never, heaven knows he never, heaven knows he never should. Amen. I had a guy one time tell me, he said, well, I, I can't, I can't join your crowd because I'm of a different color. And I looked him right square in the eye and I said, let me tell you something. You put your pants on the same way I do, one leg at a time. You come on and join us. And he did. Sweet. He did. Sweet, sweet. All right, the prayer focus is my neighbors. I don't think I read the thought for the day. Today I will show God's love by greeting the people I meet and we can pray. Dear Jesus, help me to live your commandments, to love you and love others. Amen. You know, that was the wrong prayer. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Losing my mind. Uh, speaking of neighbors, uh, Antoinette mentioned the, the letter I wrote to all my neighbors and, 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 and response was not very high. Uh, on that, I got a, f a couple of phone calls. Uh, it's funny, we, we've got, uh, this This is Stray Cat Central here uh, on our <laughs> street. Uh, uh, people from all the surrounding states bring all their stray cats down to our neighborhood. But anyways, so there's this cat that's just kind of been coming up at our house and, and it's just kind of pitiful and you know, starving, thirsty, and, you know, it's been freezing out. And so Mary Jean took a picture of it. I made a flyer and I put it in everybody's mailbox yesterday. And, and I've already had about a half a dozen calls about the cat. And uh, so it really broke the ice. Uh, it, and, and I guess my other one, because I told him I was praying for him, maybe it kind of, uh, People didn't know how to take that, but you know, you know, you, you, you give them a flyer about a cat, and they're, they're everybody wants to talk. Yeah. So I thought that was really good. Yeah. All right, uh, our our last day here, and we're uh, we're blazing right on through this eight oh seven here. Uh, Thursday, February seventeenth. I will forgive. John eight ten and eleven says, "Woman." Where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Recently, I found my university residence hall completely trashed. Chairs were strewn all over. Broken eggs were splattered on everything. Toilet paper coated most surfaces. I was livid. I told anyone who would listen how mad I was, and I wanted to get back to the people who had done this. Thankfully, the time it took to clean up cleared my head, and I was reminded of the story from John chapter 8. Though the woman had sinned, Jesus implicated the Pharisees, saying that any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone. In verse 7. Jesus called attention to the fact that we all are sinners and chose to forgive the woman instead of shaming or punishing her. That is love. That is forgiveness. And that is the God we follow. Mm -hmm. The pranksters did something wrong, but it is not my place to condemn them. If I want to be, become like Christ, then I need to forgive people. Even when they have wronged me, I must forgive because Jesus first forgave me. And that is from Matthew Holden from the Hoosier State uh, of Indiana. Prayer focus is on someone who has wronged me. And the thought for the day is I will follow Christ's teaching and forgive my enemies. Boy. This is another one of my favorite scriptures. The woman caught in the act of adultery. 
he who is without stone, who is without sin, cast the first stone. Boy, I tell you what, it's, it's just a, a fantastic story. Uh, Jesus leans down and he writes in the sand and uh, just drives me nuts that they don't tell us what he wrote. Yeah. I mean, it just yeah. talk about a cliffhanger. <laughs> well, I mean, it just, boy, the questions I'm going to ask. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, that, that's obviously it wasn't that important, but it's important to me. Uh, but, uh, you know, forgiveness. It's, uh, I think I told everybody last week that we have just recently rewatched the movie The Shack. Has, has everyone read the book? I have. I've read it. Jerry? No, sir, I have not. Judy? No, sir. I okay. have not. Nor, nor uh, have I been the movie. Y'all got y'all got homework to do. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm gonna challenge you and challenge everybody that I know, including Joey and Jana. They have. <laughs> uh before the end of the year, read the book The Shack. Uh, I want to tell you, it was life changing for me. <laughs> It was, it was, it, it was really interesting about that is I didn't read the book. Uh, Mary Jean read it too. <laughs> we, we drove from here to Willow Springs, Missouri, to Kansas City, Missouri, to Paul Husco, Oklahoma, and then to Dallas, Texas. And, and I think she finished the book before we got to Dallas. And I tell you, I just sat there and just cried, driving, crying, <laughs> driving and crying. I mean, it was something. Uh -huh. And then, uh, and then a few years later, the yeah. the movie comes out, and then you know we we we've got it. And you know, what I'd like to do maybe one day it will, uh, do it, watch it at the church or have everybody over here at the house and watch it or whatever. Fantastic book. And. You know, and it's it's about a million things, but one of the things is about forgiveness. You know, Amen. How how do you what book, is, what book is that again? I, I missed the uh, the book title. Shaquille O'Neal. Stop. <laughs> the Shack. The Shack. Shaquille O'Neal. All right. <laughs> S H A C K. And the funny hey, I've read I've, I've read that book and then saw the movie as well. It's, it's a good one. Okay, you don't have homework, Joe. <laughs> yep. The uh, a funny story, Mary Jean. You want to tell it, honey? Yeah, mother kept trying to tell me I needed to read this book called The Shack, and I don't like to read normally. I've just never been a fan of reading. Um, anyway, she, every time I go to her house, oh, you need to read this book called The Shack. And I finally said, Mother, why do you think I would be remotely interested in reading a book about Shaquille O'Neal? <laughs> <laughs> and needless to say, she gave me the book and I kind of moved it around the house for a few weeks. And finally, one morning, I got up. And Poured me a cup of coffee and sat down. And I called her about 11 o'clock and I said, Thanks a lot. I said, I'm still in my pajamas. I've done nothing. I've eaten nothing and I've had no bath. <laughs> I can't put them down. I finished it that night before I went to school. <laughs> it was that good. Huh. I've never read a whole book in a day. It, it's, it's a fantastic story. And, and what's really, really, really interesting about that is how God brought that book to be. Amen. It, wa it wasn't anything about William P. William P. Young. William that? Paul Young. William yeah. Paul Young. Uh, it, 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 it gives all the glory to God. And when you hear the story of how the book actually came to be, it was it will blow your mind. I mean, it's just it's amazing. It really is. 
It's it's as good as Moses parting the Red Sea. <laughs> oh, it's better. Mary Jean said. <laughs> but anyways, that's forgiveness. It, we all agree, forgiveness is tough. It's it, it's tough. Um, it, it, it's tough to forgive those who have wronged us. Uh, but I think one of the most difficult things we do is forgiving ourselves. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times we like to wallow in our own sorrow. Uh, and I don't know, really know of a, a diplomatic way of saying that, but it's the truth. Uh, and uh, you know, I've, I've been guilty of that, doing it to myself for years and years and years. So I'm, I'm speaking to you firsthand experience on that. But uh, if, uh, if God can forgive us, we can forgive others, and we can certainly forgive ourselves. Amen. Amen. All righty. Anybody have anything before we pray? Joe, I've got one quick thing. Um, Come on. A little, a little bit ago, I put myself, I muted myself and got up and looked out because I heard fire trucks and saw them, and I just had to make sure they went past Pat's house. So they were going somewhere down here in the bend. I saw a, a strong strike of lightning just before that, so it worries me somebody's house may, may have uh, been hit. Oh, boy. Okay. Mercy. So, Keep everybody in your prayers that uh, that it's you know that the house is okay. Yeah, I'm afraid when we wake up in the morning, we're going to see some some damage out there. Yeah, yeah. So and it's going to turn cold. I, I check. I've got someone coming to trim my crepe myrtles, and uh, I told him to wait till on up in the morning because at eight o'clock in the morning it's going to be thirty six degrees. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow, it was it was seventy and something today. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, all righty. Uh, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna do this. Uh, I I know a few weeks ago I asked Joey to pray because I know that uh, I outweigh him a lot, and he and I know knew he wouldn't say no. But, and I usually don't do this, uh, but I'm just going to, would anybody like to close us in prayer tonight? Is that waving goodbye? No, that's me, me, pick me. <laughs> well, you know, I, did, I didn't want to just call on the, the, the new lay leader of New Hope United Methodist Church or anything. <laughs> Help me, Lord. <laughs> thank you, thank you for uh, you, you know. I just had it. I just had it in my mind that you had a good prayer for us tonight. So uh, uh, I believe God will use you to, to give us a blessing. Amen. Whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Lord, you are an awesome God, and I thank you that you're a God who hears us and that you love us and you forgive us and you've modeled all of that for us for us to love others and forgive others and also forgive ourselves. This night, we thank you for the fellowship. We thank you for the time together. We thank you for your word, for the laughter, for the encouragement, for the stepping on our feet to remind us to get active and just share your love with others. Lord, this night, after the crazy weather that we've had, we just pray that you will bless all of your children and keep us safe, Heavenly Father, for the the home that may have been struck by lightning this evening, Heavenly Father, I still pray that you'll grant those folks mercy. You do all things well, and we just thank you for that. And I just pray for Joey and Jenna as they're traveling this evening, for anyone else who may be traveling, who may be listening to this later on, who may be on Facebook right now. Lord, your love and your mercy and your grace goes with us everywhere. And we are so grateful for that. Bless us this night and help us to continue to look to you and show your love to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen.
Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen. Top that, Joe. <laughs> I'm uh, looks like I've been replaced. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. No, sir.